<laughs> this is part four of how to play the bass clarinet. See, so yeah, I have my whole bass clarinet here ready to go. We've talked about how to put the reed on and make sure it's in the right spot. And now that we've done that, we're actually going to take off the neck of the clar bass clarinet. Make sure you loosen it and then just twist it lightly and it'll come off. And then we're going to set this bass clarinet gently down. And we're just going to have this part. So you still have the mouthpiece and the neck all ready to go. And we're going to use this to help us figure out how to make our first sound. First of all, we got to talk about how to form our embouchure. Embouchure is just a fancy word uh, we use. It's a French word we use to describe how to form our mouth when playing. Um, and so the way we do that is the first thing you're going to take your lip, your lower lip, and just curl it just slightly over your bottom teeth. Okay, It doesn't have to be way in there. Just a little bit, just enough to cover the teeth with just a little bit of your of your lip, okay? Because that's the spot where the reed is gonna go, okay? So you're gonna set the reed on there and it creates kind of a cushion for your reed. Then you're gonna take your top teeth and they're gonna go on top of the mouthpiece, okay? Just slightly, you don't have to squeeze in there or anything, just that goes there, teeth slightly go on top. And then the rest parts of your lips, Imagine it's like a rubber band and it's going to cinch around that mouthpiece, okay? And that's how you form it. A couple things to check is as you're doing that, is your chin pointed? It's kind of hard to see because I have all of this in the way. But you want to make sure your chin is pointed and, and that this part here is flat. It's not curled up or wrinkled up. It's flat, okay? So nice and flat. And all that's around there. And that's how you form that part, okay? Now, a couple of things we talk about. This, the bass clarinet is a wind instrument, which means you need air. So you need to practice breathing. So uh, go ahead and just take a nice, deep, full breath. And then let it out. Okay, and this time take a big breath. And then we're going to make this sound. Okay, so take a big breath and go. You might have more air in there. Okay, now do lots of those like this. Maybe more of them. Okay, lots and lots of breaths like that. Then make those t sounds, and, 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 the, and while you don't think about how to make the sound when you do it, after you do it, think about, well, what did I do to make that sound? What did my tongue do? What did my mouth do when I made that sound? Okay? And then make those sounds, make that the air longer in each sound like this. Now make it even longer. But notice I still started with the t sound. Okay, so once you figure that out and you practice breathing, you might get a little lightheaded if you do it a lot. Just take a break for a minute. Once you get that down, you're going to form that amateur that we talked about and put that in there. And you're going to do the same thing, just like we did. You might even go with it. And just try and blow air. Try and get air to go in between. See that little teeny little slot in between the reed and the mouthpiece. Just try and blow as much air through there as you can. Don't even try to make a sound. Just try to blow air through there. Okay, let's try. Let's see what happens. Oh, look, it made a sound. And now if yours made a sound, great. If it didn't, that's okay. Just blow more air through there, okay? And make that sound at the beginning. Now, you'll notice that when you do that, your tongue is actually going to touch the tip of the ring at reed and the tip of the mouthpiece. That's what it's supposed to do, okay? So you want to touch the tip of the reed and the mouthpiece at the beginning. Do you hear that? And then you want to um, practice lots of those. Each time I'm touching the, the, the reed with my tongue, but I'm not stopping my air. I'm not going, I'm not doing that. I'm going, the air doesn't stop. Imagine like a hose in the summertime and the water is just flowing out. And you take your hand and you go, psh, 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 psh. Well, nobody stopped the water. Nobody turned the water off. It's still flowing. You just created some little bits of water and that's what you're doing with this you're you're not stopping the airflow you're just interrupting it with your tongue a little bit okay and then when we stop the note we just stop blowing okay don't stop it with the tongue just stop blowing air okay
So then, see how long you can make that note go. Take a big breath and blow as much air as you can. I'm going to do it for a long time, but I'll, I'll probably stop before I'm done because otherwise you'll have to sit there and listen. But you can do it with me. Ready? Let's breathe in. Oh, and when you put it on, you get everything set, and then you breathe through the corners of your mouth like this. Okay? Don't, don't breathe through the instrument, and don't breathe and then try and play, right? So you're going to breathe through the corners of your mouth. Ready? Here we go. One, two, see how long you can make it. Ready? So that's a great thing to practice. How long can you make it and how steady can you make the tone? Okay, you heard of my tone it kind of fluctuated a little bit. I'm not a clarinet or a bass clarinet player. I actually play a brass instrument. But... Um, but you can do this and make the tone steady. You want to avoid this. You hear that fluctuation of pitch and the airflow? So you want to keep steady airflow and keep your embouchure in the same spot firm once you get it. Okay? And so forth. Okay? Now, let's say you're not making that sound at all. It's not working. Okay? What are some things you can do? Number one, you might be having too much mouthpiece in your mouth. So you might need to take a little bit of mouthpiece out. Okay, so try that first. Now maybe you're already noticing you're already on the tip of the mouthpiece. Well then that's probably not you. You probably need to take more mouthpiece. Okay, so either more mouthpiece or less mouthpiece until you get it to make that sound. Oh boy, that was fun. That was too much mouthpiece and it squeaked real loud and you're probably gonna hear some of those squeaks, okay? Now if I do not enough mouthpiece, let's see what happens. It's really hard to blow because my lip is pushing that reed closed on that mouthpiece and so that it can't vibrate. Okay, so let's put it about the right amount. And it plays okay. So find the, the space that works for you. Let's say you've tried that and it's still not playing. Well, maybe you're pointing it down too far. It's really hard to play then because again, your lip pushes against that reed and it closes it off and it's not going to work. Remember, you got to get air through there. So you got to have your lip firm enough that it's going to hold the reed, but loose enough that it's going to allow the reed to vibrate. Okay? Again, you just got to, and just practicing and trying it is going to help you find that, that tension. Okay? So it's, it could be too far down or it could be too far up. And it will also won't play. So you got to have it right this direction and right amount in or out. Okay? So experiment with that. Try and make different sounds. It's fun. You can try and make it do like I did earlier. Like make it go up and down and try and make and try and figure out what you can do to make different sounds and then of course try and play as long as you can with a steady tone it's really important you can do that okay all right so i'm going to take this reed off and i'm going to make sure that when i'm done i put it in a reed case now speaking of reed cases my recommendation is that you have a reed case that holds four reeds. You can get them at any music store. I'm sure you can get them online all over the place as well. Get a reed case that holds four reeds, okay? And it put a, re a reed in each one of those spots and then label them. Now, a lot of the reed cases have like one, two, three, four on, the, on them, but sometimes they're hard to see. So I recommend taking this reed and on this part here, the non cut out part, uh, with a Sharpie, write a one. Okay, and then get a second read and write a two and a three and a four on. So on four reads, one, two, three, four. So you know which one is which. Then uh, on day one, you're gonna use read number one. Okay, and then on day two, read two, and day three, read three, and you get it, read four on the fourth day. And you're gonna rotate, you're gonna use four reads. Now you might think, oh, I thought I'd just use one read until it doesn't work anymore, and then I'd switch. No, you want to rotate through four reeds regularly. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the reasons is that uh, reeds have a lifespan uh, of when you first start out and then they get better and better and they play really good and then they start wearing out and they start not playing so good. And by having a rotation of four reeds, you'll have kind of some in various, various stages so that when you get to a playing test or a concert or something, you, you know to pick your best one and you'll know which one is best by then. Um, another reason is, um, let's say you only had one read and it broke and then it's time for class or worse, it's time for a concert and your one read breaks and you don't have any other reads. Well, then you don't get a play and you're out of luck. So having multiple reads helps to say, okay, well, that one broke. That's unfortunate, but I got three other reads I can use. 
and you pull out one of those other reeds that it's already been worked in, it's already been played a few times, and it's ready to go, and you're ready to play. Let's say you're using four reeds in a rotation, and one of them breaks. Well, it's really important right then, when you still have three good reeds, but one broke, to go tell your parents you need another reed, or need more reeds. Okay, don't wait until you only have one reed left, or until, the, until your last reed breaks, because then you're going to sit in class for a week, or however long it takes for your parents to go out and get some reeds. It sometimes takes a while. They can't just go the second you say that you need reeds. So, so having a rotation of four is a helpful way to make sure you always have reed to play and you always have at least one reed that's going to be a good, well-playing well reed. So join us for our next video, which will be part five, um, and we'll go over some music terminology and some other things with uh, playing the bass clarinet. So we'll see you on the next video.